So pain, pain control, a big, big thing out in the cattle industry now, uh, the, beef, the various codes of practice, uh, and you're probably all familiar with them, the beef code came out a few years ago. Uh, the, you know, the big nuggets that they talked about in there were, you know, the pain associated with castration, dehorning, and branding. If pain control is to be adopted by industry, uh, drugs uh, and administration strategies must be, you know, and she's listed all these things here, readily available, effective obviously, e easy to administer, preferably long acting with yet short withdrawal. So, uh, you know, if it's close to, to slaughter, we still stay within that. Uh, return on investment, in other words, the economics of it may or may not be there just because of the, uh, I think they are, quite frankly, with all the painkillers, uh, the, the benefits you gain far outweigh uh, what you pay and they are coming down in price anyway. But the, th that, that isn't necessarily a thing because it's sort of the right thing to do, right? It's what the public looks at with us and all those sorts of things. And, and I, I can tell you as a practicing veterinarian for as long as I have, when I came out there literally wasn't a lot of painkillers. And we probably did get a little hardened to the fact that we just did things and the cattle are tough and got better. But nowadays we realize and the new graduates out there are really into the pain. And I've, I've got a couple examples to show you that, um, that really uh, solidify that. Painkillers, I, I remember saying this without, because we used to have a kind of a broken record on what we would tell the farmers. And I'd say, well, don't phone me tomorrow because tomorrow she's going to look not too good because she had a major surgery. You know, and it takes time to recover and she won't eat that well and uh, as far as the cow goes and that sort of thing. But the next day if she's looking bad, phone me because maybe something's going wrong or if she didn't clean or whatever. Well now uh, the, the, the students were the first ones, this is six, seven years ago, insisted this cow have, um, have some, have some banamine. So then, then we, so we give it that and I couldn't believe we turned it out and it went to the feed and just never looked back. So the, the, the power of the painkiller sold me on that one case. You know, again, I wasn't working for Merck at that time. It was just the power of the painkillers and what they do uh, really, really struck home with me with, with major, you know, abdominal surgery. So, you know, use pain control. This is 2016 consultation with your veterinarian castrating bulls older than nine months of age. Well, uh, we all know that's super painful. Effective January 8, 2018, we're going to get down to six months. But I know there's a vast majority of ranchers down south, which I, is where I know the, the most, they're, they're, most of them are, are using pain control at branding. So these cows are two to 300 pounds. So that's my point is I think we're way, way ahead of that as far as helping. I think it helps these calves tremendously. And the, and the, the real positive thing, if you're castrating that young, uh, you, you, it's less product. So it's less cost per animal type thing. So I mean, just kind of consider that. And I just wanted to make, mention a couple things about why, how can we measure pain and, you know, we can all sit here and look at this calf and kind of go, well, is, you know, is castration painful? Well, that's kind of like a slam dunk. Yeah, of course it is. Products have different things on the label, but really they're all painkillers, right? So then, then it's up to you and your veterinarian as far as if you extrapolate which painkiller to use in which situation for you. Extra label usages, and that's, that's again all the, you know, cattle is what I showed you. That's what's on the label for all these things. So sheep, goats, alpacas, bison, elk, you know, all these things are not on there. That's where you have to go to the, you know, the veterinary clinic too would, would tell you dosages and, and what they perceive to be the proper thing to do. Um, as a veterinarian out in the field now, uh, or used to be out in the field, when I think back, probably most of the conditions that we looked at, painkillers probably could have helped us in some way, shape, or form, and helped you, and helped the animal, right? So um, I just wonder, you know, there's a few contraindications to the painkillers, uh, if they're given it for long term, but most of the time on the farms and ranches, you're going to use them once or twice, maybe at the most in a row, and that's, that's going to be it. So this is just the conclusions and I think I'll just let you read that. I think I'll leave it there. Suzanne and I are gonna be here till the last person leaves. So if there's any questions, I'd be glad to answer them after. Thank you.